episode of Tween Buddies. I'm here with my good buddy Jace. Hello. And my good buddy Captain Soldier 76. Hello. And we're here for good. another. It's been a bit since we did the last buddy thing, and that's because uh, all of a sudden our summer got super fucking busy out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Work sucks. I got two jobs now. Yeah. Wow, your mom let you have two jobs? I got two jobs. <laughs> Why does Billy's mom... Why does Billy's mom let him have two jobs? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's why it's been a bit since we did Between Buddies. I, so we're back here, and we're just going to talk about uh, whatever we feel like. I should mention um, there might be like a 50% chance that this recording gets cut off short in case um, my uncle shows up from wherever he's at, and that means that Fox News will start blaring out the TV out of nowhere. So if this episode gets cut short, know that that's the reason why. But let's just uh, let's just talk for a bit. Um, the first thing I was going to say, which is the reason why we're going to start this is that I, I think it's finally time to say it out loud. So everyone knows, I think summer fucking blows in terms of an actual, um, I guess in terms of like, now that I'm not in school and I don't have summer break, I think summer really fucking sucks. And I don't understand why anyone likes it. Well, let's see. You're a Californian. Yes. And see, we're all Californians and Summer is some kind of brutal hellhole where everything reaches like 110 degrees, catches on fire, and then we're expected to hang on for a couple months. Yeah, it's uh, today when when um I woke up, the sun was hitting the light, and there was like an actual heat inside the room, and I was like, "How can you live like this? How can anyone live like this? The heat sucks so much." Like listeners, I will tell you, it is fall now. And it was 92 degrees today. Where I was. Yeah, I was in air conditioning cool. all day. Unfortunately, we don't, have, we don't have control to the air conditioning, <laughs> so we need to just stay in the heat, basically. But yeah, I thought fall was supposed to be like, it's October. Why can't the fucking spooky winter shit come in? Well, yeah. I mean, at least the mornings have been cold, and like I think it's supposed to cool down again this week. Man, I don't. I I I'm trying to be funny here. I just really don't like summer. I hate being hot so much. There's so many recordings where I think people can actually hear. I end so many videos going, "It's fucking hot in here. And I don't like what I'm doing." Hey, uh, can I tell you guys a little tip that I learned this year? Uh-huh. I'm not sure if someone was supposed to tell us this, or maybe I'm not supposed to be doing this, but it fucking worked. <clears throat> Summer gets really hot. Really hot, and everyone gets real sweaty, and every man in the hot, hot summer knows that. And don't pretend like you don't. Or maybe just adult men. I don't know. <laughs> we get swamp nuts, people. Yeah, swamp nuts is a real problem. Swamp nuts is a real problem. Like, a legit problem. And... See, I didn't grow up with a dad, so I don't know if that's a talk that anyone gives you <laughs> <laughs> about how to take care of swamp nuts. <laughs> to be fair, I've also <laughs> never had a discussion with my father over swamp nuts. Discussion with my friends. We call it BSTL. <laughs> what is BSTL? <laughs> it's a uh, an acronym for ball stuck to leg. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, so, so, uh, how do you handle it, Dingin you? I yeah, take one you... extra long step, and it fixes itself. <laughs> okay, so that doesn't, that doesn't help with the smell, but at least it's un- I want the smell? I take a shower regularly every day? Yes, dude. What? Even if you shower every day, as I do... You, it still can smell. And I figured out a fucking solution. Deodorize your fucking ball sack? Is that what you're about to tell me? Yes. Right. Now, I've heard some people do, like, talcum powder. You know, like, they fucking talcum powder their balls. Is that what talcum powder is for? Is that is for to stop your balls from getting sweaty? 
fucking apparently like people do that and people have been taught that uh-huh. but then like i read an article that was like hey stupid you use antiperspirant on your armpits rub them on your fucking inner thigh and your nuts will not be as sweaty or as smelly Okay, for a second there, I thought you were saying rub deodorant on your nuts extremely gently. No, don't rub deodorant on your nuts. Rub it on your fucking thigh. Okay. But basically, yes. <laughs> and no, oh. not deodorant. Antiperspirant. So that's like, that's, that's the white stick. Also, don't well, put antiperspirant. Like, don't put Axe deodorant on, on your thighs because it's not going to help. Yes, do not. Do not do that. That's a bad that is a big bad. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I never thought of it. I never thought that something that was safe for your armpits would also be safe for your near your ball sack region. Well, I, I've never thought of it either. And then, like, I tried it out, and I'm like, oh, it fucking works. But Bulma told me not to do it. Because, um... Uh, <laughs> this was after you came out and said, Bulma, look! No stink! <laughs> No, because antiperspirant um, contains aluminum in it, and that's what gets you to stop sweating. But the aluminum is also possible to give you cancer. That's why, like, a lot of women's deodorant Ooh. doesn't contain aluminum because they can get breast cancer from it. I can see anyone can get breast cancer, men or women. It's true. So I saw the beginning so in, of Fight Club. In theory, you shouldn't be rubbing it on your nuts. But I can tell you, it works so fucking well. (sighs) I don't know. Just like take a bathroom break at work, for example, and just like let it all hang out for a good five minutes. (laughs) Air dry. Am I the only one? Yeah, am I the only one that fucking does that? Never. It's fucking fucking liberating, bro. Like after I have the shower, I just turn the fan on full blast. And just stand there for a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, this is a good episode. (laughs) (laughs) Um, No. Wait. You have a shower at work, too? No, I'm talking about at home. Oh, okay. For a second, I thought you were at work airing out your poles. Well, yeah, that too, but still, like, you know. <laughs> okay, wait, let's back up a bit. Let's talk about etiquette the workplace. Why are you airing out your nuts at work? Because, you know, what is... I, go into a, I go in there to make I go in there to make a boom boom. <laughs> and then, you know. Blow it up, so to say. Blow it, yeah, and then, you know, after you're all clean and tidy just kind of stand there for a little bit <laughs> okay but you're out in the open after out of the stalls you're out of the open. okay so i'm imagining your workplace has like multiple stalls and anyone could walk in at any time it's not like yeah but that. we also it, no yeah there's stalls there's stalls that have doors that you close but we also have single bathrooms with which you could do that and guess what they're both air conditioned Hey, question. Are you standing up the entire time, or are you just still sitting on the toilet? Oh, no, I'm standing up. There's no way fucking air is getting in there, bro. What? Standing okay, wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. So, the <laughs> at the abyss. Like the prophets once said. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, if, okay, if it was a bathroom with a stall, does that mean someone could walk into the bathroom and then, like, through the little fucking thin crack, if they happened to pass by, they would just see you standing fully up <laughs> with your fucking, like, dick and nuts out? Yeah. Just, but... like, standing like, fucking look. Uh, <laughs> All Might style with your hands on your hips. Yeah. <laughs> giving, giving but look, the look, up. look. Exactly. But look, look. look. If, you, if, you're too, if you're too ashamed to stand in the first stall, just go to the one closest to the wall that people aren't going to pass by, and boom, problem solved. Or use, or, the, use the handicap stall is what you're going to say. Or just turn around so they look at your ass instead. <laughs> <laughs> what is he doing? He's been standing for the last five minutes inside the stall. <laughs> Oh, you know, <laughs> if, if I walked past the stall and I saw like butt cheek, <laughs> like <laughs> I would think to myself, "Oh my god, it's one of those dudes who drops his pants all the way down to his ankles to pee." <laughs> 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 
And how <laughs> you guys run into, into the fucking wild? But it's kind of the worst thing. <laughs> Could you imagine someone who does one of those who puts the full pants down to pee, like doing that at one of the um, uh, urinals? <laughs> so he's just like, "What's up, bro?" And he takes his pants off. Him. I've seen that at 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 a, at a baseball game and at fucking Disneyland. Why at Disneyland? I feel like you would get arrested for doing that at Disneyland. Right? I just walked out of there. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, nope, need another bathroom." <laughs> <laughs> not in here um wh- what about do you, what do you what do they call those things where i think th- this is going to be this is going to sound crazy if there's a lady listening to this and they're like men have those do you know those things that's like a like a pig trough for peeing into <laughs> where there's like- yeah 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 specifically at baseball stadiums it's called a trough that's that's what it's called is it a trough, yeah, a trough. it is a trough it, yes and it's made even worse if there's fucking ice in it Oh, that's... Dude, do you know so... what the best like joke is when you're peeing in one of those, and like mm. other people are in there? Just be like, "Hey, dude, nice watch." Oh uh, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say is that I have um, so I don't use urinals because I I fear public being in the public enough. So the idea of peeing next to a dude, even if we're both not acknowledging each other, sounds weird to me. So I've always gone into the stalls. Um, there's also because I had a traumatizing event when I was a kid where I used one of the, uh, the urinals and then I think a kid said something and I thought he was talking about me and I was like, oh my God, I'm defenseless. <laughs> my, my penis is out. And I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and since then I've never used urinals. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I, I hate when people break the, uh, the urinal spacing rules, and I had to. I also had to explain this to Bulma once. And uh, there's a lot of women that are completely unaware of the urinal spacing rules. And if there is actually one woman listening right now, the rule is: if there are a line of urinals and someone's using one, at least take one urinal space between you <laughs> and him. Yeah, makes sense, just right? Give them, just give them a little space. But you will be surprised as to how many times people will break that rule and just get up shoulder to shoulder and fucking unzip themselves. I'm like, ah, oh, cool. Fantastic. It's 2019, bro. Get with the program. What? Get with the program? <laughs> What do you say? You're saying you want to live in a world where a man can openly pee his penis in one hand and his hand around his friend in the other urinal going, we're going to get through this together, bro. <laughs> Whatever you're going through. Yeah, why not? Wait, wait, wait. Are you implicating that I am I am made uncomfortable because the other person might possibly be a homosexual? No. Because I am more concerned of, hey, dude, you're getting some splashback, and I don't need your splashback on my fucking leg. Yeah, the the, the main. You know what? Here okay, is... you know what? <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, okay, okay. So that wasn't even a problem in my head. It was more so the the former that you were talking about, which I never really had a problem with. But now that you mention it that way, yeah, okay. Yeah, give me my space, please. Fuck you. Yeah, because I'm like, yeah. I don't need no pee on me. Well, yeah, we're, we're all, all three of us here, all four, are like, fighting the good fight, but also we don't want any pee splash. It's bad enough if I, I accidentally pee on me. I don't need another man's pee on me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I think need we no pee on you. That sounds terrible. Uh, keep in mind, that is not to say anything bad about the... Uh, the possible water sports community listening right now. You, you, you guys enjoy your fun. <laughs> but remember, it's all about consent. If someone wants to get peed on, you go ahead. But I don't. Yeah, I think that's safe to say. Dude, I fucking hate. I fucking hate when you're like. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were about to say when you're getting business. peed on. <laughs> and... <laughs> I'm fucking hate when you're I, getting okay, peed on. Okay, that was an awkward start. I don't know. I don't know how to like say this without sounding weird. So I'm gonna just say it. Go ahead. Like you ever like 
see those dudes who wash their hands before they eat, and then they leave without washing their hands. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck? What like, the fuck? That doesn't make any sense. I get, I get bothered for not washing their hands. Like, I get really bothered when and then fucking pee and then walk out. Yeah, you've ever noticed that before? No. There are people who do that. What the fuck? That's yeah. crazy. Are they like thinking that the water is like a shield around their hands so that any bacteria gets thrown away? It's okay, I have the barrier it's up. It's funny because it kind of goes back to the fucking deodorant. <laughs> it goes back to the deodorant on your th thighs thing. Your fucking ball sack sweats, people. Come on. Come on. It does. It does. And that's why I got to handle that business. Because I don't want to be walking around with swamp nuts. No. Swamp nuts is the least. <laughs> the... <laughs> Never mind. I was going to say something. I decided against it. Um, yeah. Swamp nuts suck. <laughs> <laughs> that's the long and short of it, really. And... Um... Do you think that there's like people who like, like <laughs> I was gonna say people who live <laughs> live live like in Alaska who don't have swamp nuts but they have like frozen nuts <laughs> so their nuts gets frozen to themselves. Oh, I I would much rather have swamp nuts if that were the case. That sounds absolutely awful. That sounds scary. Yeah. The idea of like uh <laughs> like randomly you live in a world where your nuts can be frozen to yourself instead of being sticky. Because the stickiness you can deal with. Because hey, you... wait a minute. Go ahead, caller. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking about your frozen idea. And if a man dies out in the wilderness, frozen, uh -huh. does that mean his like specimens are still active? Because like they freeze for this, they, they freeze sperm for donation. Yes. So, okay, so let me see if we get this right. So let's assume. So, it, so, so in theory, <laughs> so let's say in this hypothetical that can be. I'm yes, gonna, I'm going to set up the the scientific experiment room. There's a man out in the woods. It is currently snowing heavy. Uh, how does he die? Let's say a bear literally like punches a hole into his chest in the middle of his stomach and he's dying for bleeding out from bear punch no he... <laughs> wait let me finish let me finish his let me death finish. has to be i was gonna say but before he died the reason okay. that the bear was punching him is that he, he was airing out his nuts <laughs> so <laughs> as, as he's dying his balls fall into the snow <laughs> and then <laughs> <laughs> the sperm inside gets frozen before he before his body realizes that he's dead so that when people find him they can keep his balls in the snow and keep his sperm perfectly frozen to continue on his generational line let's assume that's the scenario is that possible I want to say yeah because I I don't know I don't know how science works but I assume if you keep your nuts like frozen then your sperm gets frozen too they stop moving or something. I mean I want to say yeah but I don't think anyone would ever do it because it's not ethical. But I I think it's possible. You know, science has not delved deep enough into how how does uh or any of that work but actually i thought if you're dead how do you make more so does that mean like whatever you have <laughs> whatever you have loaded up is the last of you yeah whatever you had loaded up that's 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 what's that's what's there <laughs> that's the only thing that lives on that feels like that feels weird and then, that would be like as if um <laughs> As you were dying, you left a note that said, "Protect my boys. <laughs> they still have a chance to see life. <laughs> <laughs> Keep them nice and frozen." I, I know I've just been shot. You're gonna have to mark this episode, by the way. Am I? No, I'm not. Because the last time I released an episode, I put an actual, fully blurred out a uh, porn picture, and I did not get flagged. There's a lot of peen talk in this episode. I'm just saying. The of, algorithm is gonna get you. Uh, oh, the algorithm is gonna have nothing but like. <laughs> wait till I put the tags up. I'm gonna put tags up. Balls, <laughs> penis, being. 
<laughs> urinal. <laughs> All right, let's go back. Let's let's stop talking about <laughs> penis stuff for now, and let's go back to the idea of airing yourself out in a bathroom, which I'm still not a hundred percent over. <laughs> What do you mean? It's very liberating. I'm not saying it's not liberating. I'm like, I guess I'm trying. I'm not trying to shame you, but I'm also trying to shame you. I don't understand how you can have so much freedom and be so free spirited to just be like, yeah, this is happening. I don't know. Funny enough, starting this new job, I realized one thing. People like me. I can make no mistakes. Huzzah. <laughs> That was the last thing he said before the police carted him away. The man was exposing himself in a public area. He said to the judge, the Judge, sir, have you ever had swamp nuts? And the judge, <laughs> the judge listened very intently. And yes, then as a California, I completely understand swamp nuts. So there has to be like a female equivalent, right? Swamp, swamp puss. Nuts? <laughs> oh, that's so horrible. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know how ladies work down there. I assume it's like some kind of fucking robot machine or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If you're I'm a lady sure. and you know how that works, leave a comment down below. I know there's at least one percent of you who watch this who's a lady, so please leave us. Well, I just want to know. I know. Okay, we all know it exists. I just want to know what y'all call it. You know, that's fair. Because obviously, yeah. the for every... I was going to say, can you quickly get off mic and go ask Bulma if something like this exists? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, hold on, hold on. Give me a second, then. You All want right. me to? Yeah. Okay. Be hold very up. respectful. We don't. We won't put her on the recording. Just <laughs> <laughs> say it in the most respectful way possible. What's the lady equivalent of Swamp Notes? And man, and as we wait for that, we'll we'll need to figure out what the answer to that question is. But yeah, um, you still there, Ginyu? Are you out, are you out there? Um, I'm still here. Okay, I'm good. still laughing at my own joke, my own <laughs> stupid joke. That sounds right. So that's why you muted yourself. I was like, why do you have yourself muted? It's because you're laughing. <coughs> oh man. Yeah, I can't have that kind of. I don't, I don't. I don't think I could have the kind of freedom that you have for yourself. I'm right. back. Um, she says uh, she doesn't know what the term is, but she says she does confirm that such a thing exists. Can I? Can I coin it? I'd like to go with swamp puss. <laughs> We're not no, gonna... that's. <laughs> Are, Are you, you saying it's not delicate enough? No, it's not good enough. Uh, <laughs> we have to cancel the line of Swamp Puss t-shirts <laughs> Can't Cancel uh, the book like tour to go, I'd like to go with a Simpsons reference and say steamed clams uh, that, I feel like the problem is that then people won't take it seriously This is a very serious thing that happens to women <laughs> And women have trouble enough being taken serious The last thing we need to do That's is to true. make their, uh, their plate right. of meat I don't think Swamp Puss works. <laughs> you know, I can agree with you on that. I don't think Swamp Puss works either. But maybe it's because uh, it isn't the same, like... I, I don't think it's for us to decide. Answer in the comments, please. <laughs> Answer in the comments what you think would be the good equivalent of Swamp Nuts for ladies. And if you actually do know the term, please tell us. Like... I was trying to think of a way. What about dredged puss? Is that good enough, or is that worse? No, that's, that's like slightly oh. sexual. Mm. <laughs> that's fair. Because oh okay, yeah, okay. oh yeah, that's also a problem. It gives off a different smell. Yeah. What about misty vagina? That <laughs> sounds. Because <laughs> that can also. Yes. I think that I think as a group we don't know the level of uh, the 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 right like level of what to say here. Without so, so here's okay so maybe oh I think I you can kind of agree with me on this. I see no problem with saying nuts 
because I feel like that's an inbuilt thing to me. But also when I start to try and think of what to call a lady thing, that's when I feel like I'm going over the line. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we totally do need a uh Yeah, you know what? We'll go back. That or we'll ask. <laughs> we'll do. If enough people want it, we'll go out and get a conjugation of women. And we'll get them <laughs> together. And we will have them <laughs> figure out a term for swamp nuts for ladies. Swap nuts for lady also sounds like that was hair conditioning where it's like a L'Oreal for men or something. <laughs> it's a leave-in conditioner. <laughs> Swap nuts for ladies. <laughs> it's specially made just for them. All right. Uh, the long and short of it is fuck summer, dude. Yeah, like, man, uh... summer sucks so much. You have to deal with that specific thing but also you have to deal with the fact that your entire body feels terrible like um what's that feeling you know that feeling and i think you guys will know this because you're exactly like me where you uh you know it's hot but also you can't leave a specific place because you're working on you're working on something and then the second you move a little you go oh that cold dampness is my sweat that's literally all i feel right now (laughs) yes i do I do know that feeling, and it sucks. Especially because I know that feeling happened to me while recording this fucking podcast. <laughs> I've been wearing, like, I, I I feel very uncomfortable wearing wife beaters, but over the summertime while wearing my uniform, I'm going custom to wearing them because I don't want, like, sweat to peek through my overshirt. So it's much better to have it, like, on the wife beater. Yeah. It's and, unfortunate. And like, I, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I don't feel I don't feel that cool breeze, but but like trust me when I say that my coworkers know like when I, I fucking can't take the heat because one time they walked up to me and they're like, Hey bro, you okay? And they handed me a fan. Like an actual fan with which to cool my fat ass. It was glorious. Damn, you must uh, have been like <laughs> you must have been sweating so hard you went a darker color mid work. Like your as, brown as, got darker. As the one listener uh <laughs> who did not who, who grew up without a father listener mm-hmm. fucking uh yeah. I mean you listen to my posted. videos, right? You're a subscriber. Guess, yeah. <laughs> you uh, leave a like. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 pay, I pay for the Patreon too. Exactly. <laughs> uh as a one person here who grew up without a father figure. Uh, I didn't know that's what what uh those those shirts were for. Those I didn't know that's what undershirts were for. For the longest fucking time, I also didn't know what they for, were for. But the, as someone who has a father, but also he's a trucker, so I don't see him a whole bunch, and I had to kind of figure this stuff out for myself <laughs> along the way. Uh, I just assumed that all the um undershirts were for like when you have to put on fancy clothes and you need like a like a baby shirt on that's what i assumed it was for oh i i, I that's what i believed it was for too like so that like your nipples don't peek through yeah like, <laughs> the fucking Cause, cause like, it's like so people don't, so yeah. people don't see your fucking like pepperoni areolas like through your fucking thin ass dress shirt or it, some it's shit a, it's, it's a man bra <laughs> it <laughs> that's is what they are yeah, I thought it, I thought it was like for sweat and shit. See, look, I I am from a very hot place that isn't California originally, and I was just used to not wearing this many layers of clothes. So that's why I never really wore it until I got to high school, because then I had to start wearing fancier clothes for like band concerts and shit. <laughs> And then I just got kind of used to it. And then after I got out of high school, I was like, wait, I don't need to technically wear these anymore. So I stopped wearing them. And then now that I'm at work again, I'm like, huh, fuck sleeves. <laughs> like white beaters better. Hmm. Yeah, I assumed for the longest time it was just so that nobody could see your nipples when you wore fancy clothes. <laughs> I didn't know. If I'm sure that's it. probably the other reason. But they also make pasties for that if you want to do that. You just have to rip it off your nipple afterwards. So just, yeah, but then you see the pasty though. It's like the shape of the pasty. You know, everyone just, knows that. She's then, supposed to get like the same. Wait, what? I show up to a wedding in my fancy, uh, in my fancy clothes with fucking pasties on my nipples in front of all my family. <laughs> Hello, good to see you again. Uh, you got I mean, nice it is. I like your flower pasties. 
that is bacon. Very festive. It really fits the decorum of the current thing we're here for. Oh, did you did you match them to the color of the wedding flowers? That's very cool of you. <laughs> yeah, I asked the bride, uh, what's your favorite flower? I thought, what better way to respect their union than to put their flowers on my nipples? Dude, if you like that, you should check out my fucking banana hammock. <laughs> oh, Looks nice, too. <laughs> That's for after. That's for when everyone's asleep. <laughs> No one can see. But yeah, I don't. All this summer stuff really makes me hope. It. I feel like summer's also gotten worse, right? Like I feel like it did not used to be this hot, and now well, maybe. I mean, I guess we've reached this point in our conversation where, like, yeah, the 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 Earth is dying. Yeah, it can't die soon enough. Can it die before I have to suffer for summer again? No, nah, I still want a couple more years. No, nah, I'm done. Fuck it. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I'm ready to hit wipe and <laughs> say GG next <laughs> next life. I gotta I gotta live until they make a fucking good Justice League movie. You Just let it let it stand, please. <laughs> let me tell you right now, you will have sons and daughters that you will pass on your mission to because that's not happened in this lifetime. <laughs> Oh yeah, that ghost that haunts the theater. Yeah, he has unfinished business. That's Grandpa. That's <laughs> Grandpa Chase. <laughs> he haunts the theater. <laughs> uh, bad flag would have been fine. You were too hard. <laughs> it just suffered from bad script writing. <laughs> Damn you, Scott Snyder. Zack. Zack Snyder. <laughs> oh, my bad. Your, your ghost self, you've gone senile. <laughs> That's how long the fuck been, out of here. That's how long you've been waiting for a Justice League movie is that your ghost has gone senile? <laughs> your, your ghost to son has to take care of you? Uh, speak here. Speaking of DC films, uh, Woki, you saw uh, a certain film in theaters recently. I did, yeah. How was it? it was non spoiler review. Yeah, not non spoiler review. It's uh, it's a real good movie. It's real. It's built different because it is different. It feels like it looked at what every other superhero movie was kind of doing and said, "Let's try not really doing this while also kind of doing this." It's really weird to explain. Uh, but it was good. Um, I really liked Joaquin Phoenix, which is what everyone has been saying basically about that movie. Even the people who don't like it have been saying, oh, this shitty movie, Joaquin's doing his best. And I'm like, you could have just left it at he's good and I don't like this movie. <laughs> no need for the flowery <laughs> language. But yeah, it's... Uh... Have you seen it? No, I don't have time to watch movies. Yeah, he's got two jobs. He has two jobs to support. <laughs> Damn, two Barry jobs. Bond. Damn. And you have not seen it yet just because you want to wait a bit. Yeah, I want to wait a bit. There, There is a little uh, uncomfortable and paranoia with it that comes with this kind of film things. Yeah, no, totally. If you want to see it, talk about, I uh, want to hear about my paranoia, check out my day in the life where I talk about my exact feelings of good, heading into Joker and talking about how I, I get to tell you guys this because I'm assuming you guys aren't going to come right afterwards and see it. But the idea of like trying to tell my brother and sister in so many words. Um, <clears throat> and I wasn't able to tell him because there's no good way to tell your brother and sister this. Um, if anything were to happen, you guys need to use me as a meat shield for what if anything goes down. <laughs> my, my God. <laughs> I wasn't able to tell him that just because I don't know how to properly convey that. So I just said, run, <laughs> stick together and run <laughs> and stuff happens. Holy hell. That's, Holy hell. That's fucking dark. It is. But also very noble of you. Yeah. It's unfortunate that my nobleness was not able to fully <laughs> be um, seen through just because I don't know how to properly convey my feelings. So it kind of goes off of like, uh, uh, we'll be, you know, if things go down, uh, we'll run. Don't worry. <laughs> That's basically how that came out. All my I mean, we laugh, we laugh in nervousness, but this is a genuinely scary thing. No, it is. And I 
definitely do believe that there's a good way to hand. There's two ways to handle something. One is to really think deep and think hard about it. And then there's uh, the other way, which is my, the way I prefer is just kind of laugh about it and realize that the situation is funny just because it's so extremely dense and it helps to kind of use laughter to help yourself feel better is my basic thinking behind it anyway. Did you just give like an analogy of the film? No. The funny enough, okay. it's not. <laughs> Wokey's Joker would be completely different because it would focus on me and the ending of it would be totally different. I would actually be uh, super funny is what my basic thing is. That was what I'm saying. Can oh, no one would ever want to give me a a DC Universe film because I, I would just make Batman and Robin, but like turn up to 11. <laughs> turn turn the subtext into text. <laughs> Batman and Robin yeah, are right. hap- <laughs> happily married. Yes, <laughs> happily married together. Uh, George Clooney is back because <laughs> he agreed. He he loved the idea of a gay Batman. <laughs> Wanted to support it. Uh, no, I mean like uh, what what would I fucking I I uh, I don't think I could ever handle a Batman property. None of them. You think none of them? You could uh, throw your hand. I don't. Over? I don't think. I, could, I don't. I don't think I can handle making a Batman problem movie. A, maybe, maybe a Nightwing movie. See, but that like, because you would be, you'd be the yeah. person to who know you know the importance of Nightwing's ass. So you'd make sure to yeah. fill that in. <laughs> but you no, also but understand I mean, the character. Yeah, I, I, I like. I understand most of the bad characters, and I understand that like. It, those stories are getting tragic and they're not really like one to lighten up a lot of the times, <laughs> but that's why I'm like, I'm like, Oh, I can make a really good Superman film or a really good wonder woman or flash film because you know, they'd be very lighthearted, very heroic and very American way. Uh, but I don't think I... Superman would actually be Superman is what you're saying. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> he wouldn't be Batman. Thing. Which I love Batman. If you looked at my fucking shelf of shit, you know that uh, I love Batman, but couldn't make one. I don't think the world needs it. I think I could. I think I could probably make a pretty good um, Batman movie. I don't know what kind of Batman movie, though, specifically. Um, I don't know. I couldn't do like solo Batman. I needed to have. I need to have. So here's the one thing I want that everyone seems to hate is that I totally need a Batman who has to 100%. No Batman movie has ever actually dealt with the fact that Batman has a lot on his plate and that he's constantly having to be like, well, I have over 5,000 villains, and each of them has their own alignment chart that's like, all right, they're cool with this one, they're cool with that one, this one's currently that one, that one. Like, no one's ever been able to actually actively um, make a Batman movie that feel that. Yeah. Because every time we come close, something kind of screws up along the way. Like, the closest one I want to say that gets to that feeling is probably Batman Returns, which is Penguin and Catwoman. But it's still not the thing I would want, because both of them have to be also made the villains of that movie. So they kind of have to be, like, their origin stories has to be told. And that's not 100% what I would want. But I would want a Batman who's already knows that... And you'd have to come in there with, like, preconceived notions of, like, I know who all these guys are. I know who Zeus is. I know who Poison Ivy is. I know who all these guys... I know who Mad Hatter is for some reason. <laughs> Even though Mad Hatter is only really used in comics or video games, he never is going to be see the light of day in movies. But I would want that kind of movie. Basically, I just want to make the Arkham Asylum book, but into an actual movie. And it sounds kind of impossible to make, because that's just not the way movies, uh, comic book movies are currently uh, like. No, because most comic book films are made for like a like a world market, and so it's easier for them to tell origin stories than it is to like trust the audience to understand things. Mm-hmm. And like, I feel I really if they if they fucking trusted people to be like, I don't need this guy's backstory to enjoy this film. I think they could get like a lot done. Yeah. And that's the other thing is, like, why I would say, like, if I were to make a movie. There's actually two movies that it would be specifically DC that I would love to make. And if no one's going to make them, 
then I'll make them myself because anyone who tries to make this would be a fool's errand. One is, like I said, Arkham Asylum, and the other one would have to be, um, uh, fuck. I can't believe I'm literally forgetting the name of it. I love this book so much, and I just, Kingdom Come, there you go. I would want oh, to yeah. Kingdom Come. They could never make, I don't think they could. No one in the force of the world. I think that's no. the saddest thing. If your ghost is out there looking for a Justice League movie, my ghost is right next to you waiting for Kingdom Come, because that is literally impossible <laughs> to make. There's just like no, um, there's just no way, and it's no, it, it's not possible. Basically, I know how. As much as I shit on uh, Lord of the Rings because I don't like those movies, I kind of understand where those fans came from. Because for the longest time, Lord of the Rings was seen as unfilmable. Like literally, you can't make a movie out of these books because they're so dense. So much happens in it. There's not so much fighting that to make a movie of it would, in the current state of the movie market as it was at that time feels impossible and that's where i that's basically how i feel about kingdom come is that there's no way to actually make this i feel like that's why they 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 gave zack schneider so much uh so much towards like his universe of the dc films because he did the impossible with watchmen which was like of course like his watchmen is not perfect no but he accomplishes a lot in it and even so much sort of like they are ver like director's cut versions that include like the black pearl storyline and all this like extra things and i think that's why they gave him so much leeway with this world for so long because they thought well he's got it he got it together yeah i mean that's kind of how i felt going into superman uh before deciding not to see because of how badly it was doing but really what he did with Watchmen, and again, a lot of people can take whatever umbrage they want with the film, uh, saying it's boring or saying whatever. He actually did what was impossible for a lot of people and made Watchmen into a movie. And for better or worse, it is literally just that book kind of told in a movie version with some differences made here and there. And obviously no giant, um, what the fuck is that thing that shows up at the end of Watchmen? It's an octopus thing, right? Yeah, it's like a big monster. It's a giant monster. Yeah. Um, he ended up having to change that because he, I think he actually said, uh, I remember seeing an interview at the time saying, I fucking love that thing. You think I don't want to include it? We just can't include it because literally no one would take, like, it's one of those things of like, it breaks what people feel like um, when they're seeing a movie. If they see this giant fucking thing, it's like, that works perfectly fine in a comic book, not so much in an actual movie. And it's like, all right. Yeah. Enough. Man. Can you, is there a comic or manga that you feel that you'd be able to adapt into a live action? No, really. <laughs> I'm not, not even a manga? No. <laughs> I'm not a writer. I mean, neither am I. I that mean, doesn't stop me. <laughs> I mean, just like, like you, you would just be in charge of like outlining like plot points that you felt were like important and like character arcs. Like you wouldn't have necessarily have to write the dialogue. But, like, it's just, like, the story should go somewhat like this, and the reasoning for this is because of this. Mm, oddly enough, that is a question I think about very often, but I can't really name anything off the top of my head, more so just me judging uh, whatever story and saying, hmm, this could have been so much better if it was like this instead of like this. Oh, so you just like being a salty bitch, huh? No. Um, <laughs> Not necessarily. I think that being nitpicky. If, if all three of us combined joined our forces, I think we could make the most bitching live action Naruto movie. <laughs> no, that already exists. It's called the Hood Naruto. There's four parts. Get with the times. First of all, <laughs> okay. What if we got the guys who made Hood Naruto, kept the cast, and said we enjoyed your work so much, but I feel like. We could take it in another direction. Hey, okay, okay. Speaking of live action fan made stuff, Speaking there was this mashup. There was this mashup of uh, Samurai Champloo, and uh, they they even got like New Javis involved. He made music for it, or not New Javis? Sorry, um, the rapper, not not the beat maker. Uh, yeah, because I was gonna say New Javis is dead. Yeah, <laughs> he's dead. Uh, Shing, I don't I don't actually know how, to, how I'm supposed to say his name, but 
Shing Zero Two or O Two. Blah blah blah. Uh, mm-hmm. He had some verses in it, but it was a, a fan made video of uh, Mugen fighting uh, Afro Samurai, and it was hilarious. Nice. Was it actual Samuel Jackson repri- reprising the role? <laughs> See, I, no, I, it was I, not. I'm half joking, but if you were to ask um, Samuel Jackson, he would totally be into it because he loves manga. He loves anime. That's why he was in Ki- the Kite Runner live action movie is because he likes Kite Runner. <laughs> I mean, we've all seen the clip. Yes, we've all seen the clip of Samuel Jackson saying, Hentai too. We all know... <laughs> We all know that Sam Jackson likes to get real freaky. Do you think Sam Jackson, by the way, this is going heavily off topic. Do you think Sam Jackson ever looks at Nick Fury porn and kind of goes, yeah, <laughs> that's me? No. <laughs> I'm going I'm to I'm go with a strong maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how great would it be if you went to go visit Samuel Jackson's like home? And like, and like, he had like a bunch of like very nice paintings, and then one of them is like a, 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 a anti drawing of Nick Fury fucking someone, and it was like fan art, and he put it up in big like, um, uh, he put it up like on a big display for everyone to see, and it's like super detailed, so it actually looks like him. <laughs> I can imagine that. I can imagine that actually. <laughs> Man, that all sounds great. I would love to do it. So that's why I think we could also probably get Nick Fury in for our Naruto movie. <laughs> I know who we could definitely get for our Naruto movie is uh, Michael B. Jordan, who launched his fucking uh, what? What's the fucking brand? Chanel? No. Shinobi. No, he 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 launched a fucking collaboration brand, like that was like his stuff plus Naruto. And they're selling like a, a single Naruto T-shirt with like a really shitty like, like it looks all crackled and crap. Uh-huh. Is selling for ninety nine dollars. I want to hold on. <laughs> God damn you, Captain Ginyu, drop me that in chat. Just say it. Why have you muted your mic? Because it's hilarious. I don't know. I, was, I didn't want to interrupt. Oh, you're balling so hard. You want to stop our conversation <laughs> talking about how you're going to buy Gucci loafers? <laughs> Is we Gucci? Gucci loafers? Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't remember oh. how when, when right. I first started using we Gucci as, as a replacement, we're saying that we good. Or that you know everything's gravy, yeah. but I say we Gucci a lot, and then yeah, I know I make that up from you. Uh, oh, you did? Yes. Nice. So as an extension, I say Gucci loaves, and like I actually looked up the price of Gucci loaves, and I was like, I can get those, and it would totally be meme status. Wow, I cannot believe he's selling ninety five. Yeah, because uh, I've I've found my yeah the. $95 Naruto shirts with the fucking legendary signing on it. It's not even, they're not even like, <laughs> they're not even, they're not drawn well because they're drawn exactly <laughs> how they look. But that's like, the that's the most like, that's something you'd find at Hot Topic for like $9. Is there something on the back? Is there like, <laughs> the thing that fucks me up there, I think words. Maybe. Maybe it's made out of that Supima cotton. That shit's like really fucking nice. I got some of those shirts recently, and they're like my favorite shirts. Not those like stretchy fabrics that like Hot Topic has. Well, see, the funny thing about like rich people clothes is like what a lot of people don't realize is that it's not necessarily the look that they're selling. It is the um, the comfort level. I just want to quickly throw out this quote from Mr. Michael B. Jordan, who says, the way of the ninja is personal to each ninja. Jordan is quoted as saying, but Naruto sticks to his word. He doesn't break his promises. 
<laughs> I mean, I fucking love it. I love it, you know, because you know he's like a true Naruto fan. But I'm like, oh, you got them to sell this at Coach. You're out of your goddamn mind. He's fucking brilliant is what he is. $2,500 for a fucking bomber jacket that has like the fucking Naruto cloud pattern on it. Man, you know what? If you give us uh, $50, I'll send you three t-shirts and all of them will have like increasingly uh, detailed art of Naruto eating ramen as commissioned by <laughs> by Jace. <laughs> and there'll be, uh, it'll just be him eating some ramen and then we'll be good. And that you could get three shirts for the price of like half of one shirt from Michael B. Jordan. I want you to click this link that I just sent you, which will take you to the main coach page. And I want you to watch this Michael B. Jordan video, which he filmed and like watch him pull out these fucking Sharingan eyes. Dude, I don't think I can. Cause I just saw, I just want to say, I just saw the thumbnail. <laughs> Michael B. Jordan with Sharingan eyes, and I'm kind of done. <laughs> This is why you don't give Weeaboo's money. <laughs> <laughs> this is 100% why you don't give Weeaboo's money. Oh no! Because one, we will do I dumb shit, to... and then two, we will buy dumb shit. <laughs> I had to. I, I can't clean because I'm afraid of a copyright strike from Michael B. Jordan for, he for hearing us talk shit. <laughs> oh man, this is also why you can't give Weeaboo's money. They'll go crazy with it. And no, I mean, yeah. Like, we will, like, the thing is, we will do dumb things, and then we will buy this dumb thing. It ain't right. Man. And I think with that, I think we're gonna close up the good old buddy talk, because we've been going for a while here, and I'm not sure if my uncle's gonna come back at any time. And I think it's a good, good way to leave it off with, with Michael B. Jordan with the Sharingan eyes, because I, I, I can't do anything anymore. I've got it done, emotionally speaking. <laughs> uh, so I want to thank uh, our good buddies here. So again, um, if you listen to all this, tell us what you would call Swamp Nuts for ladies. We are interested to hear what you have to say. How do you feel about Naruto X and Michael B. Jordan, <laughs> the crossover everyone was speaking of? And what DC movie do you think uh, Captain Ginyu could actually make? Because we've already kind of got into what we could make. But what do you think best suits? Captain Ginyu in his hot sex hotline style acting. <laughs> what can he bring to the movie screen? <laughs> uh, and with that, I'll say uh, it's time to say goodbye, everyone. Why don't you go say goodbye, guys? Say goodbye. Uh, Bye. Bye. Humanoid.